And hi everyone, welcome back and I hope you're sipping on a nice cup of coffee and are ready for the next part of our multiplier event. Can you hear me fine? I guess that's a yes. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so I'm Martina from Martina Tampia from the University of Vienna and Franz Peschaka and I developed Unit 1C on simultaneous interpreting um, for this course. As my colleagues already mentioned, this course is not only aimed at interpreting students, but at students from a wide range of disciplines. That's why simultaneous interpreting is part of the whole course, but can be skipped by those who already have the necessary skill set. This is also apparent from the course structure, as presented before. For those who main, whose main experience is in interlingual subtitling, on the other hand, the introduction to real-time processing provided in this module will be especially relevant. Module 1C consists of a teacher's guide and five subsequent units that aim to develop simultaneous interpreting competence. This module might seem a bit compressed rather than extensive to experienced interpreters or lecturers, but it was, it was devised with the task of re-speaking or trans-speaking in mind, and thus mainly concentrates on a few specific skills. After a general introduction to interpreting, the students delve into preliminary exercises and gradually hone their skills their interpreting skills and uh, subsequent units. The attention devoted here to preliminary skills of shadowing would appear excessive by standards of mainstream conference interpreting uh, or interpreted training, but students without experience in the task of listening and speaking simultaneously will surely appreciate the practice material offered here for shadowing and paraphrasing. They can choose from a wide range of materials and each, each unit starts with a video lecture followed by a list of works to read and a quiz on the content of the lecture and the suggested reading material. Here are some of the questions that appear in the quizzes in Unit 1C. We also offer interviews with experienced practitioners and renowned researchers on specific topics. And finally, this module includes exercises for each of the presented skills. Most of them rely on videos. The teaching of simultaneous interpreting is traditionally seen as the culmination point in a sequence that starts with consecutive interpreting and note-taking, followed by practice and site translation. Simultaneous paraphrasing is usually not featured very prominent, prominently in mainstream teaching of conference interpreting, but within the ELSA course, it serves two purposes. On the one hand, it introduces future re-speakers to the cognitive demands and linguistic strategies, of real-time reformulation and editing. On the other hand, it is a valuable prelim preliminary exercise that approximates the complex skill of simultaneous interpreting. There are two preliminary exercises that are particularly important when training simultaneous interpreting with the goal of becoming a speech-to-text interpreter one of them is, as already mentioned, um, paraphrasing, and the other one is shadowing. Shadowing as mere repetition in the same language has often been criticized for remaining at the linguistic surface level and not involving deeper semantic processing. But it has been shown that shadowers will correct mistakes in the input and this clearly demonstrates that the task goes well beyond just phonological reproduction. It involves lexical and semantic processing as well. 
In this unit, we distinguish between phonemic shadowing and phrase shadowing. Phrase shadowing requires a bigger time lag compared to phonemic shadowing, and the input must be kept in the short-term memory before it is reproduced while still listening to further input at the same time. This increases the memory load and the cognitive efforts, like in simultaneous interpreting, where the time lag is also, also usually at about two to three seconds. For these exercises, we provide a list of graded video material in selected languages. Once the students can successfully shadow basic speeches, deliberate practice should focus on more challenging material, but this does not mean that they should progress to longer speeches, which would put the focus on maintaining concentration, but to faster and more technical speeches. Proper names and numbers will also prove highly challenging, especially in phrase shadowing. And last but not least, switching from exercises in your native language to a foreign language will ultimately bring the students another step closer to interlingual life titling. Now, in cognitive terms, simultaneous paraphrasing is quite similar to simultaneous interpreting as it is based on grasping the meaning and expressing it in a new linguistic form. Paraphrasing is even often felt to be more difficult than the interlingual task since appropriate wording is already in place and not every linguistic item of a given language has a contextually suitable replacement. As a preliminary exercise in our ILSA course, simultaneous paraphrasing serves two purposes, real-time editing of a speech in the same language may often be required in interlingual speech-to-text assignments and therefore prepares the learners directly for this task. With regard to skill acquisition for simultaneous interpreting, on the other hand, practicing to simultaneously re-express what has been heard without the additional challenge of finding the translational correspondences is a useful stepping stone. In terms of progression of difficulty, the same principles apply as to shadowing, from impromptu to more formal and scripted speeches, from slow-paced to fast-paced speeches, and from narrative speeches to densely informative and technical ones. In simultaneous interpreting, the pre-process skills largely correspond to preparation. Preparing for a given assignment is crucial, and this applies maybe even more to life titling. Therefore, the exercises in, the, it's one big exercise, the, the exercise in Unit 3 simulates the process of preparing for a speech-to-text interpreting assignment. Based on the lecture and literature in the reading list, students are asked to work out how they would tackle the task of preparing for a conference on a content level. Questions they need to answer are, for example, what do I need to know? How can I get that information? Where can I find it? How am I going to deal with specific terminology? And which glossary software is the most suitable for me? This exercise aims to help students gain experience in the crucial task of preparation and also to provide them with helpful tools to tackle future professional assignments. When the learners finally arrive at proper simultaneous interpreting, so to say, they should always be aware of the communicative task. Simultaneous interpreting serves the needs of listeners who do not share the speaker's language and also the needs of a speaker who wishes to get a message across to their audience. This means that from the beginning the simultaneous interpreter must be able to produce a target text that actually makes sense to the audience. As the speech unfolds, the interpreter's understanding of the situation is updated 
and contextual knowledge will be built and can serve to guide the process of comprehension. With regard to quality, there should be no unfinished sentences that suggest to the audience that some part of content has gone missing. General strategies that this unit focuses on are compression, chunking, anticipation, inferencing, and time lag adjustment. And just like in Unit 2, we offer graded videos that are available in a number of selected languages. We advise to record the simultaneous interpretations so that they can be subjected to a critical assessment because um, the elements that secure development and improvement are the post-process tasks. The focus for our purpose is on analysis and self-assessment because it connects simultaneous interpreting and trans-speaking. Since there is no universal definition of quality in interpreting, self-assessment of quality does not follow a specific rule or a set of rules. However, a relevant distinction should be made between formative assessment and summative assessment. Formative assessment is more process-oriented and focuses on particular goals in the learning process, like avoiding hesitation sounds. Summative assessment, on the other hand, relates to the quality of the interpretation as a final product. This can be broken down into several dimensions, which are all mentioned in much more detail in Unit 5 of this module. So that's all for me for today. If you have any questions or comments, Franz and I are very happy to answer them. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Martina. <laughs>